Hello, welcome to True Hoop with me, Gerard Hector, and Coach David Thorpe. How are you, sir? You mean Coach Thorpe from Blue Sky? <laughs> Correct. Coach Thorpe is now on Blue Sky. So hilarious. Last night in our True Hoop uh, group chat, I was like, David, people are asking me for you. You've got to. I mean, he, and he already had an account. I got him a code I, a year ago, I, and he set I one up. I guess so. Is that what happened? I don't remember <laughs> yeah, any of it. Yeah, and it, well, listen, I, I know. This, this is why I'm here, David, to help you get, <laughs> usher you through <laughs> these, these moments. He's like, all right, I'll get on there tonight. And he said, welcome, I'm here. And then I think, God, you got a, a bunch of uh, followers, like, Dude, pretty really? immediately. And you're climbing pretty fast right now. So I'm it's good. so out of the, you know, because of what happened to Twitter, which at one point was my favorite app. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not that I use many apps, I don't. Right. But it was fun and funny and clever mm -hmm. and informative. Now not. Yes. So I've just, but I used to watch games. And I'd have an idea that wasn't going to be something we'd necessarily run a true hoop or before that ESPN. And I would tweet it. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm out of that game now. I don't <laughs> think that way right. anymore. I don't think about sharing thoughts. And so um, I've got to, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'll figure it out. But well, here, here's like, an idea for you. It seems like a safe place right now. Anyway. Did you delete Twitter off of your phone? No, I honestly, I don't remember if I did or not. Okay. I, I don't know where it is on my phone. Okay. It's certainly right. not like front and center. It Got used it. to be in my little social media yeah. window. Yeah. It's not there anymore. I don't know where it is. But okay. I didn't delete Twitter. Because my, so my suggestion would be to put the Blue Sky app inside of that social media window, wherever oh, Twitter used to. to be. So now you're like, you know, it'll be a habit thing. Oh, let me go and do the thing. Oh, 100%. <laughs> I'm going to do that. Yeah. 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 So join us at Blue Sky. Correct. So uh, whatever, he is at whatever Coach, that means. What is at, at Blue Sky? <laughs> it's it's basically like Twitter. It's a, it's very similar in how no, it works. I know that, but I mean like I first I like thunderstorm skies, but <laughs> what is Blue Sky? I, I don't know why they came up with the name Blue Sky and uh this is uh Jack But Dorsey. is it run by another Mil Jack Dorsey Olga? started it. Um who 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 started Twitter. Um he he did start Oh, Blue that's Sky. right. Yeah, I remember yeah, now. Yep, yep, yep. Um so anyway, Find Coach Thorpe on Coach at Coach Thorpe All of dot us, yeah. Blue Sky dot social. You can find me at Gerard Hector dot Blue Sky dot social, and you can find Henry at True Hoop dot BSKY dot social. So yeah. We look forward to seeing you guys all there and building up a community, which, by the way, the NBA community on Blue Sky is growing pretty rapidly. So yeah, uh, apparently. folks, get on there. Um, all right, David, we had a fun night in the NBA last night. 50 burgers. Abounded last night. I remember I in our group chat last night. You were watching games. I texted you. I was like, Victor Wembanyama was subbed out with 28 minutes to play. He scored 50 points in 28 minutes, and I was like, I know the Wizards suck, but wow, <laughs> like because that's a lot of points in a short amount of time. And uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo also scored 59 points against an also not very good team, the Detroit Pistons. So they're actually playing pretty well this year. You know, and that was overtime. And that was overtime. Yes. Um. So I thought it'd be interesting to look at how these two tall men uh, scored their points uh, last night uh, with David's watchful basketball eyes and what he saw. Um, and the reason why I wanted to do that was because maybe last week on the pod, one of the things that David was concerned about early watching Wemby was too much three-pointing, shooting, and stuff happening away from the rim and not getting enough easy baskets and two-point shots close to the rim, right? And I think we, you, you asked me, did a quiz, which we know quizzes are banned, but you were like, how many two point shots a game do you think when be? And I, I was like, four? Like, I was pretty much dead on. Like, he just doesn't score in there, right? It's mostly taking three point shots. And he was eight of, God, what was it, 12 last night, 14, something like that. Um, but he did score some two pointers. I saw some rolls to the basket, but I wanted your eyes to look at his points. Giannis's points and what if anything you would tell Wemby that he should steal from how Giannis scores his buckets I mean it's Giannis is such a, a unique athlete uh, as, as Wemby yes. is much more physically it, strong than Wemby for sure yeah yeah Wemby's never going to be like Giannis that way I don't think it's just his right. frame yeah um at seven foot four gosh what if, what if <laughs> he massive like Wemby what if he looked like Giannis one day? How scary oh, that um, well, then goodbye. League <laughs> over. Like, I, don't, well, I mean. <laughs> Crazy. Um, so I have a couple of thoughts. First of all, uh, those two players should send a nice, uh, well-done <laughs> pizza to the head coach of the other teams. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. They were greatly helped by the disinterest from their opponents to actually not let them score 50-plus points. That's for sure. 
and maybe three or four pizzas and feed the other team too. Because they didn't seem at all all that concerned. I mean, when Wemby made second, third, four, three, you may want to have – I would have considered guarding him better. Probably, yeah. yeah. I, I'll tell you a, a silly, stupid story, but it, you're going to understand exactly what I'm saying. And I'm happy to get to the, the real content you're looking for. Uh, I was coaching once in um, Tifton, Georgia, which is a small little town in Georgia. Mm-hmm. Pretty dirty little town. I'm sure it's, it was fine, but like a Walmart was the only place there, whatever. We mm-hmm. were at a, an agricultural college hosting a camp, a lot of really talented players and um, very, very successful coaches there, high school head coaches. I was the youngest guy there, um, more or less. And two of the coaches talked about a team they had played. One was coaching uh, in Atlanta, big time top 25 program. The other was coaching at a top 25 program in Auburn, Alabama, mm-hmm. in high school. And they both played a team from Statesboro, Georgia, mm. who ended up winning the state championship pre- that previous year. But they played them during the year on national TV. Back then, there'd be like one national game a yeah. week on one some channel somewhere. And so they and these men were coaching. And, um, and so one coach, Don Dollar, a very famous guy whose sons are pretty famous, won, won a championship at UCLA. Uh, Don was talking about... Um, their game against Statesboro and the other coach, his name was Frank Summer, other coach at Auburn. Uh, he said, um, man, they were just shooting the lights out when we played them. That's why we got smoked. And Dollars and Coach Dollars, again, a very, very famous national mm-hmm. high school coach back then. He's like, well, we guarded their asses when we played them <laughs> from behind three. And I always think about that because that is, that is not what happened against Wemby. Against Giannis, I think he only made, I watched all of his baskets. He may have only made one three, maybe two. One was in overtime when the game was more or less over. Right. Um, but they, they weren't, there was nothing special happening. Mm-hmm. So Giannis plays most of the time. Now his jumper was working. Yep. Uh, I got fouled, obviously, a good amount. Um, Giannis plays like the court. I say this all the time when I'm coaching. When I want them to hit like a sudden burst of speed with the ball, I, 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 I tell them, imagine the court's just suddenly tilted this way, right? So you, all of a sudden, your you, gravity is pulling you downhill. Mm-hmm. So it's a teaching point. It's a, it's a visual feeling we want them to have. Well, Giannis plays that way a lot. The court is suddenly tilted. Mm-hmm. Choo, he's flying downhill. Wemby doesn't have that ability. No. But that, that doesn't say he can't get downhill. Normally, he likes to drop step or spin, mm-hmm. which is good for him. And if he's eight feet away from the rim, he could dunk it because he's got eight foot long arms, <laughs> it seems anyway, and long legs that get him there. Um, Giannis, there's a force. I, I, watched, I didn't watch Giannis's game live last night. I watched Giannis's game the night before. And in, I don't remember what he scored in that game. It might have been 30-something yeah. uh, against a bad Toronto team, mm-hmm. if I remember right. Yep. But I thought Giannis really played with force in that game, too. And they were missing even more guys last night. Uh, and he just wasn't going to lose. And to just downhill, downhill. There was one play, it was two or maybe even three of Detroit players kind of, kind of trying to get a, a, offensive, a defensive rebound. And Giannis had been around there. And he was just scrambling and fighting. And all of a sudden, he got the ball, boom. Mm-hmm. Like, there was a relentlessness to him. And then I saw Wemby. Wemby, how many threes did Wemby make? Eight of 16. I wasn't a guess mm-hmm. eight. Yeah, I was guessing eight. Okay. So, eight of 16. Obviously, if you don't guard him, he still may never shoot that again. Eight mm-hmm. of 16. That's impressive. But um, he did make plays at the rim. He did. I'd, uh, I'd like to see even more of the former, uh, of that, and, and less of the threes. I'm not against him taking 16 threes. But um, I, that force. I can't stress it enough. I thought Dwayne Wade and Iverson and before then uh, Isaiah mm-hmm. or Tiny Archibald, mm-hmm. the, the, especially small guys, have to bring so much force to score like that. Correct. Wemby doesn't have to do right. that. You're so much so taller. He doesn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if he, I mean, Giannis does it right. and has two MVPs in a world championship. Mm-hmm. Right? That's one of his superpowers. It'd be, it'd be good for Wemby to develop that kind of mentality. We've talked about this a lot, and I've written about this a lot. Shaq's disposition to dominate is, is a big, big part. 
was a big, big part of his enormous success. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is guys that have looked like Shaq and never come close to playing like him. Yeah. Even for one year. Yeah. He, he just, he had a force about him. So playing with force is something your coaches talk a lot about, Gerard. Mm-hmm. Yep. I don't know they define it great, and I don't know that they uh, uh, teach it great. I think they recognize it. And so I listened to Dagno talk, uh, Mark Dagno mm-hmm. talk last night. And he was talking about, uh, we'll talk about uh, rookies in a mm-hmm. bit here. He was with A.J. Mitchell. Uh, getting in and digging the ball out of a mm-hmm. scrum, basically. That's a little guy playing with force. Giannis and Wemby can do it at a much higher level because they can do it and score a bunch. Mm-hmm. Okay, I would say to Wemby today, uh, you're really fucked up now. <laughs> yeah. you really. How many field goals did he get last night? Uh, Not threes. Yeah, I, I have it up right now. Uh, he was, so he had, uh, take away his threes, 10 field goals last night from, from two. Yeah. I would definitely, I would, I would take him out for a bagel or something in mm-hmm. the morning or a smoothie. And I'd say, young man, you have really fucked up <laughs> because now I'm holding you accountable for that. Because you're going to miss, you're going to take 16 threes in games and make three. Mm-hmm. So there's nine points. You made 10 field goals. We're at 29. You haven't got fouled yet. We're cooking with grease, man. Mm-hmm. Like you do that every game now. Again, it helps. When the other team doesn't care that you're scoring, I think mm-hmm. he had two assists, maybe three. Yeah, yeah. So they didn't. Cl- I don't think Wemby's that selfish yep. at all. Right. So if they, if you're playing with force and you're drawing more of a crowd, you're yep. going to have your mm-hmm. record and assists. But that force opens up everything else. Yeah, I love that. Um, and I think that I think you're so right. Like he, you know, th- there was an opportunity there. You look at the free throw disparity, right? Giannis went to the line 19 times. I want to say in that game. Wemby went six, something of that nature, right? I mean, buddy, like, again, to your point about Shaq, the disposition to dominate, he would just get fouled all the time down there. And I get it. Yeah. Like, part of it is Wemby probably doesn't want the contact at this point, right? Because you're getting beat up if you keep, right, playing with force. That's part of the game, right? And I think, again, like, that's such a huge advantage point because you put, of course, you put the other team in serious jeopardy because they're going to foul you every time, right? It's free points. You're stopping the game. I mean, it's all the reasons why you, you get in the bonus early, all the reasons why you want to do that, right? It's just in that way, he can be so much more of a weapon, right? Than just, all right, you were eight for 16, which by the way, beautiful. Love it. We love that you can do that, right? Yeah. That's not going to be a, reg- a regular occurrence, right? Where you're eight of 16 from three. Yeah. Again, take the shots you're supposed to take. If you have it, you're not going to have it. Right now, I think LaMelo leads the league. Was, last time I looked, it was 12 threes a game. Let's, let's say Wemby ends up averaging 10. And if he can make four of 10, fantastic, Mm -hmm. right? More likely it's going to be three points something probably over the course of every 10. Mm -hmm. And so how do we average 30 points a game? Well, we play a lot more force everywhere else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes total sense. Um, And a quick reminder or note for people, because we didn't mention it on the show, the news came out, I think, in between our episodes. uh, Spurs head coach Greg Popovich did suffer a mild stroke uh, recently. And so he is away from the team right now, uh, getting himself together. And I don't, I mean, that I imagine has some impact on them and the team, right? Because, you know, yes, your assistants are there all the time, but the head coach is the head coach for a reason, right? The relationships, and I don't know what they are, that Pop has with certain guys are what they are, right? And so him not being there, I'm sure it's going to have some level of effect uh, on this team as, as, as they move forward. But it looks like it's not that serious. I mean, the stroke is always serious, but it looks like he will be coming back uh, at some point this season. I would, I would. I'm not a doctor. I, I would qualify from talking to people. I would qualify that and say, we really don't know. Yeah. I'm telling you, yeah. I, I'm not breaking any news. I have no idea, but um, I don't know that he's coming back. I think it's easy to say, but I think you're hit, hitting a bigger point. Not to, not to diminish what That's Pop true. has meant to the right. game, mm-hmm. whether he comes back or not. That's a sip. We'll have a whole show dedicated to Pop <laughs> if he were to decide to yep. retire. Yep. Um, but yeah, a change in voices, sure, can make a difference. I also think he sucked. Mm. Mm-hmm. And so you have been I, saying I mean, that you and I talk mm-hmm. well, but we've also been saying he's a competitive dude. Of course. So what a great gift when you could admit, man, I suck at this. I'm not doing what I should be doing, or I could be doing so much better. Look in the mirror and say, all right, it's on me first. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite things about players. I, I I told a player this morning. A player had a turnover in a game last night, but I I think he was doing what I told him to do, and he'd never done it before. He asked me for film. I made a comment. You should do this more. He didn't really understand it. He said, can you send me clips? I did. So we did it, and he turned it over. Well, he didn't give the turnover, but it was his turnover. And I'm like, oh, my God, I messed up. And he's like, no, no, that was my mess up. Like, no, I knew exactly what I was doing. 
and I just fucked up. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Wemby, I think, couldn't ignore, you know, I'm just not producing it like I wanted to. Mm -hmm. So he's had a nice little run now. And Chris Paul's playing, uh, by the way, amazing. Yes, I mean, look, amazing again. Just in terms of impact winning, he's great. Yes, lifting the collective IQ of that team, of course, with just his basketball knowledge, so so important uh, for this team. Who was actually dealing with injuries, right? Jeremy Show, uh, So Channel, I think he's played all, all season yet. Um, no, he uh, has, but not lately. Okay, yeah, he hasn't played lately. For Devin sure. Vassell just back. Just got back that game. Yep. Even yeah, mm-hmm. so he's not playing well. They got you know, look, they're a, they're a mess. Gerard at the guard spot. A yes, mess. they are. Disaster. Besides Chris Paul, mm-hmm. Blake Wesley, terrible. Malachi Branham, terrible. It's a long list of terrible, and Devin just got back. And uh, they're still 500. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Wemby's good. It, it, Wemby and Chris Paul are doing they're, good. They're very good. They're very, very good. Um, staying in the, your wheelhouse, which is player development, um, news came out this week that Bronny James will only play South Bay Lakers home games. And once I heard that, I thought, oh, I'd love to get David's thought about this because guys who listen to this podcast, you know, and gals, David believes playing time is – so critical for young players yeah. like they, they have to play and like just get reps and reps and reps and reps and look the g league season is already shorter than the nba season and if you're cutting it in half with just home games i'm like so what is he playing once a week I, I, to me that seems like a problem or red flag but you are the expert what say you oh oh you're right i i don't know what the hell's going on i i don't know what the fuck is going on i i i couldn't believe when i saw it I don't. I cancel my subscription to the New York Times. <laughs> I, I'm keeping the athletic. Right. Uh, I don't. It, it, I, this month everything's coming, but I'm just done with the news for yeah, now. Yeah. Um, I will read sports news. However, I still have. I read mm-hmm. the article. Uh, I don't know what the fuck they're doing. I don't know if it's. I talked to a player the other day at a five hour bus ride. I talked to another player about to go on one. This is G League. Mm-hmm. Uh, that isn't fun. Nope. Is that why you're not playing road games, Bronny? Because you have to be in a bus sometimes right that's fucked up it what what, what else other well, i don't know what other reasons could there be right none of them are good i i watched his first game it's fucking terrible yep fucking terrible terrible i i don't i can't what's the worst word than terrible <laughs> an abomination disastrous like yeah yeah absolutely right. out of his league yeah. out of his gore no which, clue which you said was going to happen in this league he, he he's barely played he had he barely played in college. I mean, obviously because of mm-hmm. relatively serious tragic, injury. scary, mm-hmm. scary situation. Uh, I don't give a fuck who your dad is, young man. You got to fucking play and learn. You can't learn through osmosis. You have to play and suck and play and suck and play and maybe suck a little bit less. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Until all of a sudden, instead of one play out of seven that looks good, it's two. That's twice as good. Mm-hmm. That's really what happens. Uh, he has absolutely no idea what he's doing on the court. He smokes layups, bricks threes, got an offensive foul because he's ran a guy over without the ball. He was screening mm. and just panicked, and I could go on and on. And I don't care. Right. Who cares? Right. You're going to learn. Mm-hmm. Just play. Yeah. But the, but the, the idea that he won't play road games, yeah. you know, it, is, it, is it something mental where he – can't leave home I don't that's know. a scary yeah, thought yeah none of this is good for his development correct other than maybe he'll be less healthy we don't know about this if there's something wrong with him mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but to pick road games right tells me it'd be mental not physical right because you're home and away whatever so it's all bad news for Bronny james unless he just doesn't want to uh put up with the bullshit of the g league in which case you're just not gonna make the nba well i mean <laughs> which is all right right but, I mean, Dave, hey, but that's, be an actor. Like you're the, super famous, right? You want to be in the NBA, right? Because it's not well, like, yeah, on yeah. those road game do. days, you're not coming up to the varsity and playing there. So, uh, well, not if you want to win games. So, well, we know he's not, right? I mean, JJ basically put him in those games as like, all right, let's get the whole seven day wonderment yeah. out of the way and like move on. Like, unless it's a serious blowout where they're getting crushed or they're winning by a ton, he's not playing in NBA games, and the Lakers aren't doing that at this stage. So. It's really shocking, a, a shocking development. And may, again, if there is a reason, a mental health reason, right. which I have no way of knowing any of it, right. I stand corrected. Right. I, I, that is more important than anything else. Correct. Uh, he's a very famous guy. Mm-hmm. Maybe just want to get the, the cat calls on the road for, for G League. Mm-hmm. NBA will be different. You can't control that. Right. 
But in terms of basketball playing, uh, for all the people that trashed me for thinking he had NBA talent, uh, uh, they're just going to look much smarter mm. when he flames out. Yeah, because yeah. he's on a path right now that does not look good. I, I just like again, it seems to me that he's just got to just play more. Like that seems to be what play and play and play and play. And this again, I don't know how long the G League season is, but again, 50, I look, 50 some odd games. Yeah, so it's a lot one, of games. Once a week, you're playing now. Like that's oh, not. He'll be so yeah. They'll, they'll, sometimes they'll play three times Twice. a week. Normally okay. two. Yeah, okay. but normally two. You're right. So he'll average 1.5 games a week at best, maybe 1.2, 1. 1. 1. Not enough. That's yeah. Not even close to being enough. And also. The, the quicker you the, – one of the benefits of the NBA is there's another game tomorrow or the next day. Right. It sucks for a lot of other reasons. Mm-hmm. But it's good for development mm-hmm. because it's fresh in your mind. That mistake right. I made, I can work on and practice tomorrow. Right. And then I get a chance to do it again next day. Oh, beautiful. Right. Yeah. It's really baked for that beautifully. Yeah. Not for him. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, this, this is something that worth worth monitoring and watching. But I saw that and I was like, I definitely wanted to get your perspective. I was like, this doesn't seem like a good thing to me. Um. A couple, a little, you know, one of the things, David, about early in the NBA season is that stats are a little noisy because the game, the, the sample size isn't that large yet, right? Um, not large at all. 13 games, I think, is the most any team has played right now in the league, um, which is not most, nothing, yeah. but it's no. not, you know, as I always say, wait till we get to a quarter. When we get to 20 games, like that's a quarter yeah, of the season. Yeah. Then and we can start saying, maybe this means something, what have you. But anyway, well, I thought, it's, but part of that's because at 20, there's a good chance the guy that missed two or three games yes. is is has just missed the two or three games, and it's a small right. representative sample of the 20 games. Correct. When you play at 11, he's missed two or three. It's a quarter That's of what they played. Correct. Yeah. Yes. That's why. So as it's much a, as anything. Yeah. For and sure. And you're better sampling of who you played. Yes. Yes, because yeah. by 20 games, you probably – you definitely played your division multiple times. You got your West Coast top teams. And you're – you get a pretty good uh, gauge of who you played in the league uh, thus far. But I thought this was interesting. So the Timberwolves, Knicks, and Mavericks are all either at 500 or below. And these are all teams that I think early in the season we have going 50-plus wins, conference finals, whatever, somewhere in that range for most of those teams. Um, So they're 500 or below, yet in adjusted net rating, they're all top eight. So maybe a good sign early that, okay, maybe it's just some unlucky games not going our way. We're at 500, we're a game below, but we're still playing well. For the, playing well. For the majority of our games, we are scoring more points than we are giving up. So that's a good sign, I think. Yeah, I have no idea. No, I early. really Too early. Well, no, it's not, it's not just too early. It's, it's weird. It's a yeah. very interesting stat you found. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. Uh, uh, more blowout wins than blowout losses, mm-hmm. yeah. which, is, which is good. Yeah. It's good. Uh, bad play in the clutch. I think Dallas has some concerns about their clutch yes. play. Mm-hmm. Ironic given who they have as playmakers. Yeah. Um, Minnesota and New York have a built-in excuse. Major Injuries and trades. Yeah. They got to they gotta figure out who so, they are. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's clunky. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's just, it's just different. Yeah. Uh, Dallas doesn't really have that excuse. No. They've had a little injury bug with um, Lively was out for a little bit. Mm-hmm. But the other guys have all played pretty much. And so, Kyrie and Luca looked pretty freaking incredible well, when they Luka, played. Luca's looked very good. Kyrie had a big number, but his metro. His, the last I looked at his on off, it was not good. Not great. Okay. For Kyrie. Okay. Um, and and uh, but yeah. Meanwhile, the, the the Minnesota, I think maybe all three teams are shooting well. New York really well. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit of a surprise. It's yeah. a conundrum. It's an enigma. Yeah. I I don't really know. <laughs> Other than um, the clunkiness for the for two of the teams anyway, yeah, and lack of ability to, for Dallas to make make plays in the clutch to have the record you would think they would have. I think mean, yeah. are they five and five and six? Five and six, yeah. So it's just a game below. Yep, yep, yeah. And I think you know clutch games are so interesting, right, David? Because so Phoenix, the Suns last year were terrible in clutch games and terrible yeah. in the fourth quarter. This year they're outstanding in fourth quarter and in clutch games, right? It's like and it's this weird little and it's like but they had the same guys. It's Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, Bradley Beal, just like it was last year, but. For whatever reason, another year of familiarity, else, whatever, we're a little bit better now. Like it's, it's also, and maybe more commonly. Well, first of all, Beal is better now than yes. he was a year ago, mm-hmm. and they're worse. Uh, I mean, I've told the story before. One year, the Orioles had the worst record in baseball in one-run games. Mm-hmm. The very next season, with basically the same roster, best the record. Best. Yeah. So we call it 50-50 games. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, get out of those 50-50 games. There's, there's no such thing as clutch performer. It's a right. myth. Yeah. That's what scientists will say, and that's what I teach. Don't, don't expect to win more than half of your close games. 
The key is to be up by more than five. Right. More than seven. Try yeah. to get up as much as you can. I noticed something the other day. It might have been college, though. There was um, lots of time left in the second half of the game. And a team on game cast, a team was up like 12 points, 14 points. And ESPN had their game cast at plus 89.7% probability to win. <laughs> the kiss and I of just death. thought, yeah, I, well, no, no, not that. My thought, Gerard, was how accurate is that? How accurate in the NBA is it? Because you know me, get a right. big lead and defend the margin. Correct. I'd like to know what those numbers are. I know in the playoffs, win a quarter by 10 or more, whatever. I'd like to see some of that yeah. and with all the variants we have with three point shooting. That's, yeah. And all of that. I'd love, I'd love to see that. But one thing we do know. If you're in a super tight game, one, one possession or so to win or lose late, you're going to win half the games, you're going to lose half the games. Yeah. And um, that doesn't mean over the course of one season. You might lose six games more than you expect to one year, and over the next year you'll probably win, win. five, and then exactly. maybe down one. Yeah, it'll yeah. even out, over the course of a decade, it'll be even. I mean, so it's, it's right. So it's ultimately what you want, right? You want to be like what the Boston Celtics were last year, right? Where clutch the games, those things didn't matter blowing because they were blowing everybody out, right? That's, that's what you want. So you know... We can dominate teams, right, and not worry about that. But your point is correct, David, about the three-point variance, right? 20 points with eight to go in the fourth, that's nothing, right? Dude hits four, five threes, we got problems now. Now we're in a clutch game, right? So, that's right. But but what I want to know is if, if, if how accurate is that? If mm -hmm. I'm up, what is the number I have to be up to give myself a 95% chance of winning, historically speaking? Mm -hmm. So not forward-looking. Right. So in other words, how many teams up 14 or more, whatever the number is, with X amount of time left on the clock, are winning 95-plus percent of their games. If I was running a team, I would have my smart guys doing that. Yeah, figure that out. For Give sure. me that number because we're going to coach to that. We're, whatever we can do to be up that number with that much time left in the fourth quarter, I'm coaching to that. And that, and uh, so the other night I saw a team, it was last night the Pacers, with nine and a half minutes to play, had their starters back in. And I thought, ooh, they're going to run out of gas. They were down nine maybe. Mm -hmm. So I think the coach was screwed either way because they're missing a bunch of guys. But and they and they but they I was wrong in a sense they made a valiant return and then yeah. died again yeah yeah it's hard and that happens but though, I would right? try to be up yeah be up a certain number and and then manage the market. manage the number and the the key there too I think David is you know you always say how do players deal with success right so the starters get a lead up to whatever right and then all right coach does whatever he does he brings in his next guys in his his, his second unit. Well, the second unit has to also play the same way. That they're, not, they're not as good because of their second unit, but with the same level of intensity, all that, all of that, right? But maybe they don't. Maybe they're like, ah, game's up 15, we're good. Like, it's these weird human psychology things that get come into play here that kind of screw these numbers up a little bit. For sure. And uh, second units are really valuable. Uh, Dagno said um, his second unit came in last night for OKC. I... Uh, and change the game totally. I don't, I watched the game. I didn't necessarily feel that same, but I have a bunch of other games on too. But uh, they were balling. They were, all of his backups were balling. I think one starter was, maybe Shea was left in the game. Um, that's part of a second unit's job is to bring the energy back in the building. And starters can't always have it, just like second units can't always have it. But that's the beauty of depth. <laughs> you know, depending on the same guys all the time. Hello, New York. <laughs> I was, I was waiting for, I was like, are the Knicks going to get a little <laughs> bad <laughs> uh, ribbing here? Which, listen, it's true. They're, and they went seven deep last night. I was like, yikes, this team. So worried. All right, folks, we'll be back after this brief commercial break. All right, David. Um, rookie Watch. You had a piece come out today um, that said, rookies who fit the program. Helping your team by not fucking up, which I love that. Um, such a beautiful way to think about these things. So I encourage everybody to subscribe to True Hoop. Make sure you read that article. Great stuff by David. He goes into oh, several players who are not fucking it up. And I was thinking about this, David. Like, not fucking up is hard, man. Like, forget about being good. Like, that that's a whole other level of, like, work and talent. But just not fucking things up is very difficult when you're a young player, a rookie, Everything's going a billion miles a minute. Like you always say, they're puppies with their heads cut off, just running. They don't know anything. Like how hard is it just to not fuck things up when you get in the game? I mean, it's the world's best league, and uh, there's so many things that are going on. There are uh, voices that they're listening to from their own team, from their coaches, from their parents, from their trainer. Uh, I had a player say to me, um, 
this week. A new, a new, brand new player I've never helped before. I, I've known him. And um, so we were supposed to kind of have our first game together. And he's texted me that night before. He said, he wrote, um, can we just wait till after the game one? It, it, was, it was his first game back. And um, I, I just, I have so many voices in my head. I need to just not have another one. Of course, he doesn't understand because I've never worked with him before. Like, I don't do, first of all, I'm the voice that matters. That's how I put it. <laughs> right. But I always, just, I always want to know what the coach said. Right. Because I have to coach within the context of what the team wants. Right. I don't think it's smart to do it any Correct. other way, especially for a young guy. And he played terribly. And not, I'm not telling you I could fix it. But um, we talked afterwards about, like, get those voices out of your head. Right? I'm going to give you your voice. Now, player, my players have often said I hear your voice when I'm playing, which is very sweet. But I'm trying to, I want it to be your voice with my words. I ultimately, and when they get older, I think often that's the case. So that's one of the many things guys are dealing with. I listened to a head coach talk the other day about his player doesn't just have great instincts, but he has great intelligence. He was talking about he just basically knows what's going on. What he's really saying is he's running my fucking beautiful offense. He's executing my beautiful defense. So that's a big part of it. Mm -hmm. So in the article I wrote, I was looking for guys that are mostly positive plus minus raw, which is not the same as adjusted. Yep. Because if they're just playing scrubs, they're playing scrub, they're playing second unit, fine. Mm -hmm. But they're, they're doing fine. They're, they're the kill it. No one expects him to kill it as a rookie, except for like Wendy's and LeBron's of the world, right? Mm -hmm. um, and um, I put in that Instagram chef uh, <laughs> that uh, his don't fuck it up is his thing. It's hilarious. He yells at you, which I don't love that. But it's funny. I think it's funny because I think he's kidding. Um, but it's really it's what I tell my players all the time when they're rookies. Uh, be in great shape so you never know when you'll play 30 minutes in an NBA game. Uh, don't fuck it up because you're tired. Because they don't care right. what the excuse is. They just remember you sucking. Mm -hmm. uh, don't turn the ball over and ruin that beautiful offense if you have the ball in your hands a lot. Don't not know where to go set screens, when to cut, when to fade, right? when to post, whatever. And be able to guard your guy so that they can't just double go after you or target you all the time when you're fouling, which is bad, or, or giving up points. As long as you don't fuck it up. And I wrote in the piece, if after the game is over, no one's asking the coach about you, right? <laughs> uh, no one's talking about you. As a, you've done good. It's like, the, it's like being an offensive lineman, right? No one notices you. No one talks about you. That's a good thing. Job well done, young man, right? <laughs> Sleep easy tonight. You've done, you've done well. Now, that's not the way to get paid. Correct. Yeah. So I used to, my very first client with Udonis, I used to say, rebound and defense will get you in the rotation. The 18-foot jumper, this is how long ago it was. <laughs> The eighth team jumper will get paid. paid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it worked. I got, we got him a full mid-level after he went, he went from a $300,000, 335 was year one, to uh, uh, mid-level, which was five year 30, I think it was back then. So 2005, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, base, so basically, rebound, play defense, don't take bad shots, don't do stupid shit, right? We say this sometimes to players. Just don't fucking do, do stupid shit, right? <laughs> as simple as that. Don't do stupid shit. Yeah. Uh, uh, that means, what does that mean? The step back three with 18 on the clock, which I have players that do that sometimes. And I nod my head just like you're doing. Like, <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? I, I'm going to give you an example of something I did. Now, this player played really well last night. He, he made a three, but he did not hold his form, which is something I really want. I've never done this before. So myself, not my assistants, myself, I sent him, I can send it to you if you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. 14 examples of other players of mine who held their form in the last 48 hours and no comments. Right, just, yeah. So let me say how I finished it. I'm not lying to you. <laughs> oh, I believe you. Uh, I think I wrote, let me find it here. I wrote, uh, my son, are we clear? That's it. That's it. I, it started with him not holding his form, and then I, I'm not kidding yet. I'm looking at 15 I love it. video of I love players it. holding their form, <laughs> making a shot. He, he made his, by the way. Right. But I don't care. Right. Do it the right yeah, way. Yeah. And, and he, he wrote back, yes, sir, coach, I understand. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I haven't talked to him. He might get mad. But uh, if, if he missed other threes because right. he didn't hold it. And he knows it's a problem. We talked about it last night after the game. And he played amazingly well. But – um. Mostly, rookies just let the let the best players decide who's going to win the game, mm -hmm. 
right? And if you can get minutes because you're not fucking up, uh, congratulations. Yeah. Because that's how it starts with getting rotation minutes. So it starts with trust. That's exactly what I say to them. It starts with trust. Uh, your teammates have to trust you. The head coach has to trust you. Yep. Right. And uh, you don't have to, like, you're not trying to conquer Rome, buddy. Right. We just want to not get two fouls in three minutes and not have three turnovers in two minutes. Right. I mean, how many times do you see rookies do that all the fucking time? Yeah. And it's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because you also are being targeted to the other team. Right. And the other guys are really good. And sometimes you may have to do stuff you're really not very good at. Right. But you, you, the coach put you in. Mm hmm. Uh, and your every everyone's mom or dad is you got to shoot the ball. There's nothing I laugh more than when I, not just my kids' games because I coached them. I messed a little bit when I was young, but shoot, shoot, and I just I feel for. I mean, I, I didn't have that issue. Right. We always would meet with our parents like, like you're just not going to do that. Right. Don't be don't yelling. yell at the referees. We right. don't need to do that. Right. Uh, cheer for everyone as if they're all your kids. Right. And just trust us. We're going to coach them up the right way. Right. And if we play well, good for your son. It doesn't matter if he necessarily makes shots. Right. The game is bigger than that. It's about we, not me. Right. Like that's, that's and, and especially as rookies. Like if you're if the team's depending on you, right. Wemby's a, a, right. a, 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 an exception. Mm -hmm. You're not going to win because you're just not good enough. Right. They're not good enough. Yeah. Um, the, the piece is excellent. Um, again, David gets into these really really nitty gritty nuances. One of the things I liked, because you mentioned it, you know, uh, drifting to the corner, right? But in the piece, you talk about a player stopping three steps or three feet too short, yeah. right? And and it's yeah. like, yes, but that's the detail, right? It's like, oh, my yes. God, he doesn't know. To, if I go three, that means my defender's going to go with me versus if I stop here, I'm clogging everything up now. Right. You're exactly right. So one of the more common mistakes rookies make is they just aren't, they're casual about details, just like teenagers, right. which some of them are, yes. by the way, right? And so, no. If you're supposed to run to the corner, it should be parallel. If you have to do a line from one side to the other, dissecting or bisecting right down the rim in half, corner to corner, parallel to the baseline, will be in that spot. Shoot a laser, be in that spot. Because that stretches the defense as much as you can vertically, right? They're not normally inside three. We don't have that problem anymore. We used to. Now we're gonna, everyone knows run behind three. They want the third point. But there'll be two or three feet north of it in a sense and it's quite maddening yeah <laughs> so those kinds of things matter the the uh driving to a crowd shoot is a no-no yep. like there's lots of those things that you don't call attention we just wanted you if you go unnoticed yeah we're so happy um one of the details you, you talk about in the piece is um and we, we talk about this about players too, is being big, right? Especially your, your big men. Um, and it's, it's a hard game, right? If, you know, you, if you're in drop coverage, they got, they've got a lot of things going on they have to do. But when you're coaching up a, a rookie on, it's like, okay, it's a lot happening, but you are seven foot, whatever you are, be big. So how do you coach them to be big as rookies? Uh, did I, I, I actually uh, do with that a lot. But did I write that in the piece? A little bit because we're talking Zach about Edie? Zach Edie and like him setting yeah. screens and offensive rebounding. Like that, that's it, just do that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So real quick on Zach Eady. What I try to do in the piece, for the most part, Tristan De Silva is a little bit different, is I was showing a team's identity and how this rookie is not fucking that identity up. So uh, we talked about OKC uh, with A.J. Mitchell mm -hmm. as a two-way player who's averaging over two steals per 36 and is getting in there and mixing it up. And, and that's a big thing with OKC. Well, the Raptors mm -hmm. uh, are trying to dominate the offensive glass as they almost always have that as their identity. And Mobo's doing that. He doesn't, I'm not sure he's going to make it or not, but he's doing that well. Well, the Grizzlies love, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Stephen Adams is one of the best offensive yep. offenders, him and Muslim alone. Th that, that was Those their are, offense. Throw it up, get, get a right. rebound, and, you know. Right. right. That's like the Mount Rushmore of offensive rebounds. Stephen Adams and, and um, <laughs> Muslim alone, right? Yeah. And uh, boy, those two guys would be amazing to watch together. Oh man, as, goblins as, everything. As friends, <laughs> I just I just love to see them hang out together. It'd be amazing. Because Stephen Adams is like an incredible human being, uh... and I love Moses. So the Grizzlies still play that way, and it's good for Zach because he's enormous so and big. he's taken advantage of it. And he's lost weight, so he's more agile, which is good. Um, yeah. So that's that's uh, so playing big. One thing would be I'm working with a player on this now. Um, he gets narrow as people attack him. He's huge, 6'10", almost 240. Mm -hmm. Very, very talented. He's not a rookie anymore, but he's young, very young. Uh, he gets a little narrow 
I, I, as a habit because it used to get overwhelmed physically. So think about it. If, you're, if a car is about to hit you, you're going to bulk in. Yep. Yeah, but he, he doesn't have to do it anymore. He's this gigantic man. So long, seven, three wings, man, long, wide arms, get them wide. Uh, I take advantage of those gifts that you have, right? Uh, l- long, stick hand up, contesting, that kind of thing, instead of short arming it. Yeah, these are all habits that they, yeah. they develop when they're younger that, that need to be continually enhanced in, the, in, in, this, in this league. Yeah. No, listen, we always say this league is fucking hard, man. So any little things you can do to, as, as we say, not fuck things up, the, the better. Uh, a team you just mentioned, um, and I don't know what's going on. Bruce Brown missed some time. Scotty Barnes missed some time. What is going on with the Toronto Raptors? I, I just feel like they look very discombobulated as a as a team. And I'm just like, are we trying to win or are we? No. Okay. All right. I mean, Scotty Barnes is out. Yeah. Right. Bruce Quickly Brown's out. And out. Mm-hmm. Barry's been out. Some. Who else was out? Bruce Brown. Bruce, right. Mm-hmm. So, but you were asking about Grady Dick. Well, I, my second question is, so Grady Dick. Is he making the jump, David, from one of the worst players in the NBA to just merely bad? Now, that may sound like nothing to somebody, but that's a big jump to just being bad versus I'm absolutely one of the worst players in the league. Is he, is he making that leap? Oh, he's making a better leap than oh. that. Oh! He's good. He's making the leap to good? I don't, I don't know what dunks and threes has because I don't understand it anymore. Right. It's, it's, it's gone for me. <laughs> yeah, it's gone. Uh, I, I'm hoping it comes back, but I don't understand it anymore. Uh, but yeah, a clean in the glass, which I've always looked at too. Mm-hmm. He's their best player. He's their most impactful player. And I just watched him. I mean, Milwaukee could not foul him. They finally kind of solved the problem the second half. He made one three and they, and they ended up blowing him out or beat him pretty good. But uh, no, he's playing hard as hell. Everything we liked about him. Oh, Shooting, boy. Playing really hard. Uh, all of a sudden, he's, he's a keeper. Yeah. They've got Barrett, Quickly, Barnes, uh, Grady Dick. They need a center. Pertle's sure. the answer. I mean, and what? then they, they got some going. Yeah, yeah. And Bobo you, off the bench, they got some going. And you said that. Uh, what was it last? Uh, la, la, last year, you're like, yeah, Pertle's not it. Um, so Grady Dick last night, four ten from three. He was fourteen of sixteen from the three from the three from the free throw line against Milwaukee. Yeah, yeah. Two nights ago, yeah, yeah. fourteen of sixteen. Wow. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. He was just they just kept fouling him. That, but he was playing hard. Yeah. He plays hard. No, I, I, I like them a lot. I think he, he got good coaching at Kansas when he was there. I think he's, he's got some talent. He's a great coach. Yeah. He oh. also played at a big time. High school? I want to say he played at Sunrise Christian, okay. which is a top you know few program in the country every okay. year for high school. So he's been playing against good players for a long time. I will tell you this. With these, these I would never have sent my son away for anything. I'm, I'm advising a family right now in my other business with my recruiting uh, kind of virtual training for high school business. Uh, I had a meeting the other day with a father. Uh, his son is a really talented player and is being recruited to boarding schools mm-hmm. or, or could be recruited to boarding schools. And um, I don't recommend it uh, with, with some exceptions. Uh, but these schools, they, they, they take coaching really seriously. They're running great stuff at the highest levels. And um, the guys get a great education. I think Grady Dick got a really good education in high school and then he went to Kansas. Okay. And now, unfortunately, he's, he's where he is. Yeah. But I do think they have talent to be a, a playing team this year and a significant playoff contender going forward. Yeah. Um, and do you think Darko is, uh, I mean, it's hard to tell because they're not, you know, they're not winning, but is Darko getting better as a coach, right? Is he learning some things? Is he? The only comment I have about Darko is the other night they're playing Milwaukee. The Bucks are starting a two way player named Ryan Rollins because. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dame had a concussion protocol. He got the ball open for a wing three, and Darko almost blocked the shot. He he jumped at him and like yeah, yelled at him. Oh my god! I didn't love that. Yeah, I know you don't love that. Yeah, I don't. I don't want anyone to do it. Right. I don't want. I don't want the bench to do it. Right. I definitely, definitely don't, don't want, want the head coach, coach to do it. No, 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 no. no, I think that's a bit much. Yeah, with, with, where's the line there? Yeah, there yeah. should never be a line. Right. Just don't fucking do a thing. Right. But that. That told me a little panicky. Mm, okay. like, and, and by the way, I sent it to the player's agent and who wrote back to me, oh, I saw it live. And I saw it live too. <laughs> and uh, he could not see it. Yeah. He's going to send it. You know, he should be sent to the league. The league the team yeah. should send it to the league. Right. 
Can't be doing that shit, Darko. No. So I don't know that they've solved any of their problems, but they have some talent. They do. That are young guys. And I obviously I love Scotty. Yeah. And if, I mean, God, Scotty, right? Like he's someone who we all super high on. We we, we did a piece, our, our injury piece and we, well, we're doing drafting teams based on all the people, players that were injured. And the draft pretty much went according to what everybody thought they were going to be, right? Because we, listen, we all like analysis or whatever. We have players that we like, right? So number one pick, I had obviously I went with Kevin Durant. Duh, everyone would have taken Durant. <laughs> so, yeah, it wasn't you didn't right. do anything wrong? No, no, I I, I know I didn't. Yeah. Uh, Henry yeah. picked Kawhi, and I was like, well, Scotty, David loves Scotty. He's definitely gonna pick Scotty. Like it's just you, yeah, you know, it was, it was good yeah, stuff. He's really good. He's very good. I, I was I was just gonna bring this up too. Not that I want to get into detail on this, so we can get to our top five. But uh, the piece suggests that I bullied you into <laughs> taking Tyrese Maxey and John Morant. <laughs> And I want to be very clear. You do not bully me. You do not bully me. Very, very. I would have taken those guys in a New but York. You, you understood. I was going to take them. You understood why. I paused though, right? I was thinking about a team, I and remember. I was like, "But now my backcourt is so tiny. I got two guys yeah. under six foot two. I was like, shit. I need a little bit more size. Like that was like that was my first hesitation. I was like, I gotta yeah. get someone a little bit taller, right? Because you know me, I love I, size. Right. I have. Uh, I you know I went I went with a bunch of large guys. Yeah. Aaron Gordon. Right. Scotty. Uh, Por- Scotty you got Porzingis. And- uh, uh, no, and I had Hartenstein oh, as Hartenstein, five, too, and yeah. Paolo. Paolo, yeah, all these big I dudes. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, oh, and then Dejounte Murray, yeah. who's a very good player. Right, right, yeah. yeah. Um, but I'm not sure we'd have any fun at all guarding those little guys. <laughs> Maxi and Maxi and John and, Morant. Uh, oh my John. god, yeah, so hard to wow. stay in front of those dudes. Yeah, 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 yeah. and Maxi can really shoot. He can. So it's a good part. Lights uh, out, Tyrese. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. for right sure. To, uh, John. All yeah. right, guys. Uh, top five time. Here we go, David. Who is on your five line? I'm going to, because of a better strength of schedule, I'm going uh, Phoenix over Denver. It was really a tie for me, but I looked it up. Phoenix has, had played a much better mm-hmm. schedule. Yeah. Denver's got a better margin, but I, I like Phoenix at five. David, we are, we've been doing this pod so We're long. We're going to be the same. Right there. So Phoenix Suns are my five as well. Yeah. And then uh, you do your four. I'm, I bet it's the same. Golden State Warriors. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then I, I mean, the, the top four, uh, obviously the top one is the top one. Yes. But what Golden State has done is yeah. very impressive. For very sure. Very impressive. For sure. So we both have a four. I bet we have the Thunder at three. Correct. Amazing without Chet, what they've done last mm-hmm. couple of games, and obviously great. And then Boston and yep. Cleveland. Boston's doing their thing in Cleveland. So, I mean, my God, Cleveland, 13-0. And look, whatever. I don't look, amazing. ultimately care whether the record – I mean, I, no, I do care because I want them to play well and whatever. But I don't care about chasing records or all that. But the joy that those fat fan base has to be feeling right now, starting the year 13 and Winning is fun. Right? Like, it's, it's just so fun. And thinking about where they were, LeBron left. Oh, my God. It's a disaster. We're never going to be good or relevant ever again. Like, you guys, you got some good players and you're doing good 13 and 0. Winning is fun. And as I've said before, when uh, high school people reached out to me, and now we're in the business mm-hmm. of helping people. Um, don't go to a program that's offering you more playing time if you're going to lose a bunch. It's not fun. Yeah. Doesn't matter if you're playing if you suck. Yeah. It's just not fun. Losing's terrible. Now, if you're going to lose in a year and then everyone's going to come back, different story. But that doesn't happen at college anymore. Right. The players transfer every year mm-hmm. all the time. So winners win. And so find a program that keeps winning and you'll just be more joyous every day. Who doesn't want to win? Listen, coming to work in Cleveland right now got to be fun. These guys are having a great time. Yeah, you can see it. Oh, yeah. yeah. The, the joy is yeah, there. Yeah, look, I, I hope they run it for as long as they can, play well. Like, as, like we said, they may not lose five games before Christmas. Like, at the rate they're going right now, they're doing pretty good. So, What's the all-time record to start a year? 20 uh, Golden State went 18. Five or 24 No, Didn't they start 24 No, I thought. The Luke Walton's Warriors did. I thought. I thought they did. I thought they were twenty-four now. Wow. So. I thought so. I could be the wrong. The longest record is the Lakers thirty-three, right? Because I was yeah. a young man when that yeah. happened. I, I mean, yeah, I followed that stuff. I, I almost doubt that could happen now. So it's. I mean, oh, I don't think it could. you need a lot of good things yeah. breaking your way to go thirty-three and out. Yeah. Like I just think yeah. the talent and the variance of these games, too, with yeah. the threes and everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah but it's it's uh, exciting and. Anything to keep it from just being automatically Boston is good, too. For sure. I mean, look, they're starting yeah. to – I mean, again, not huge. But they're starting to – at least Boston and Cleveland, David, are starting to pull away Separating. from yeah. the rest of – which, you know, yeah, good for them. All right, folks, enjoy yeah. the NBA this weekend, and we'll see you next week. Take care.